Now, there's two kinds of data that are generated with Melodyne as a side effect of Melodyne's process. One is Melodyne MIDI data, which is the pitch, actual pitch data that they've detected, as well as Melodyne timing data. So you can actually take the timing map that Melodyne uses internally and export it out into tempo map area. Okay, here's an example where we're using Melodyne to actually set the tempo map across the entire song. And this song was recorded to a trick track, so the tempo is fairly even. Uh, I've tried this on, uh, like the example where we used uh, Band on the Run in the, in the tempo mapping video, and it will not work where there's changes in, dramatic changes in tempo or changes in uh, key signature. For this example, I used the guitar player rhythm track to drive the overall tempo of the song. We'll open that up, and here's the Melodyne track. Now I've got the uh, inspector open here so you can see what happens. It's important that if you look over here, file tempo needs to be mapped. And the way you map that is you click dialog box button here over by the tempo. This is saying the tempo is 72, or roughly 72. What you do is you we detect a tempo if this is not mapped. And if you click on that, this will turn to mapped once you've clicked on that. And there is your tempo map, naturally, as the guitar player played it. This works for songs that are fairly close to the tick track already. Your mileage may vary with this one. Uh, one of the, the problems with this approach is it's kind of neat, but you take a look at it closely the tempo changes don't happen on right on uh, measure beats and stuff so you get multiple tempo variations within so you're actually this is happening in real time as opposed to against the map but if you turn on the uh, tick shines down in your love goes on you appease. Tracks pretty close. Uh, so see with these small variations here, you see 73 something, 72.8, 73, 71.4. Okay, if you're using Melodyne to create MIDI data to drag to a notation program, let's say you want to you want to create a lead sheet for a vocalist to be able to sing the song, uh, you really have to pay attention to uh, the time the timing in the tempo map uh, because the, the notes won't land per measure as people are used to seeing them in typical notation. So here's an example of me just singing the song, no, no tick track. And I'm just going to drag that MIDI there. And you'll see what it looks like down here. there's a couple issues. One issue is there's some kind of false notes here as well as kind of slurs, etc. where you wouldn't expect them to be there. It may not typically be written that way. So let's just go ahead and drag this. First thing we got to do is, is to get this to a MIDI program is convert it to MIDI. So you hold the Alt key down while you're dragging and that will force the export to be a MIDI. You see in my Cursor there, you've got music loop or MIDI file. A music loop is a proprietary piece of data for we want to get a MIDI file which can be uh, universally imported into notation programs. So there's a MIDI file there, .mid. I'm going to go ahead and drag that into a MIDI a notation program and see what we get. Just see what we get for results. Okay, so you can see we've got some different timings and going across the major where we wouldn't expect it to be. So now let's go ahead and do it where we'll record the part to uh, the tempo track. Okay, here's the song sung with the tick track. Somewhere over the rainbow. Let's go ahead and drag that MIDI to there. And then go ahead and drag that MIDI out. So if we drag the MIDI file out of Studio One, 
we get uh, something closer to what we were would expect to hear, Let's listen to it. That's closer to what you'd want to see on a lead sheet for music. So I guess the moral of the story is you've got to clean up your MIDI data, eliminating superfluous things, eliminating where it's uh, melodyne is broken notes, maybe you've broken a whole note or a half note into quarter notes or something, or incorrectly identified starts and stops, incorrectly identified pitch changes, and so on and so forth. Adjust all those things. Make it look good in Studio One before you drag it into a notation program. Okay, let's talk intonation. So here is a guitar. This is actually a 61 Strat with not new strings on it, but you'll see the the problem with guitars in that the intonation, uh, if you tune something, the low, the open note is tuned. You see now, here's an E. Now watch this thing drift. It goes sharp when you pluck it, and then it gets into sustained position. Here's the harmonic. If I adjust that to sustain out and roughly in tune. This is harmonics at the 12th fret. So here's an, uh, just an open D chord. So you notice that the notes are not playing in tune. Even though you just tune this. here. So there are products out there on the market today that are talking about been able to do this in real time, but we're going to show you how you can do it with Melodyne after you've done the recording. And apply a Melodyne effects to it. Okay. And we're just going to select all. There you are, perfect intonation with a couple clicks of the button. Can't get much easier than that. And where I find this really useful, especially on acoustic guitars, where the person might be using a lot of vigor in their strumming. And perhaps a, an artist has come and recorded a song, but he didn't quite tune it up. Uh, you know, he tuned it up to open strings, but then he played the song on the fifth fret or something like that. Okay, let's just have some fun with stock loops. Everything you're going to hear today is done through manipulation through Melodyne. I started off with this 9-volt audio guitar pop rock riff. Here it is. Then we went and dropped that in. And then I retuned some of the chords. And 
you can see that this is a dupe of that, so each, each one of my edits here is also repeated there. Then we drug the MIDI out. It created some bass parts. It doesn't sound that good by itself, but when you combine it with the bass, it adds a little more depth. Then we took the drums and we just manipulated timing or tempo or dynamic. did that through every one of these drum loops has had some drums manipulated in terms of timing or volume and it really changes the feel of each one of them this, uh, really come heavy down on that last tom tom okay then we went and manipulated some just some sounds. We added in a little of a kind of a kick sound here. Stretched it way out with Melodyne. And then we took a saxophone part, completely different key, completely different melody, and just edited it to fit to the chord. So you can see you just have a blast and it's kind of a never ending. You can change anything to end anything in terms of feeling, time, or pitch. So it's just really the world is at your hand here in terms of being able to recreate the sounds that you hear in your head. Mm -hmm. 